Shabbat Shalom. Let's join together in some song like this. Yanai, 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 Shabbat Shalom, everyone. It's great to see all of you on Zoom. And uh, I know that we have people in the sanctuary as well. Let's begin with the heart tap. If you're in the sanctuary, you can look around the room and greet each other with your eyes. If you're on Zoom, you can look up, down, to the right, to the left, see the members of our community all gathering. I want to begin this evening just by thanking our clergy. I know we're trying something new this evening. We have several of them in the sanctuary and several on Zoom, and we're one community. For the first time, those in the sanctuary can see us on Zoom, um, and we're able to see our leaders um, leading from the sanctuary as well. I want to begin by saying I'm actually on vacation, and so I want to thank my clergy partners uh, for helping lead the congregation during this past week. And I wanna thank them for once again, hearing me say, let's change things. And I did it even from afar. I called them Tuesday after reading the paper and I said, Oy, it's a new year, but for many of us, it's not the year we expected. Some of us are now recalibrating whether we go to restaurants once again or see friends or make travel arrangements or uh, go to the gym or go to the store. And it would be really nice just to claim some community time as a synagogue, reminding ourselves of the caring that exists in the world and the support we can gain from coming together as a Jewish community helping one another during this difficult time. And so I wanna thank my partners for uh, once again, leading a beautiful service. And then I wanna thank our musicians led by Cantor Zell and, and Josh and Ryan, because we're gonna gather at eight o'clock for a time of gathering of just song. So if you're in your house and uh, whether you have dinner in front of you or you're in your pajamas, I hope you'll come back and just join with us on Zoom. And for as long as this takes, we're gonna meet right here each Friday, reminding ourselves of the support of our community. And of course, if you need anything pastorally, we hope you'll reach out to any of us throughout the week. So with that Shabbat Shalom, let's join together and greet Shabbat.
Shabbat Shalom. Let us bring some of that shalom and some light into this evening. It is my pleasure to invite Mai and Kai Shotland, who will become the mitzvah tomorrow, to lead us in lighting candles um, on Zoom as we light candles in the sanctuary. Lovely to see you. There you are. Let us bring light into the Shabbat together. Page 120. Oh no, go ahead, you can light your candles, Kai. <laughs> and we'll join together with this blessing. Our candles are lit in the sanctuary. Let's join as one community. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kitshanu Mitzvotav v'tzivanu lehad liknar lehad liknar shel And so we return to this melody that we just sang together as one community. And on Shabbat, as part of our Kabbalat Shabbat service, we sing the words, Come, let us rejoice. And as we look toward the rest of our Shabbat together, I hope each of us can lean into a moment of joy, find that gratitude, and perhaps your joy comes from being with our sacred community. So if we can share the words on the screen so that we can participate all together in these sacred words. <laughs> Nikadmafanav, Nikadmafanav, Bitoda, Bitoda, Bees me wrote in song, Bees me to gallery view and see one another rejoicing continue with that spirit of rejoicing as we turn to Lechadodi, welcoming in the blessing of the Shabbat of rest to spend this time together, these 25 hours, Lechadodi. Shamor v'zachor b'dibor echad hishmi'anu el Adonai echad u'shemo echad l'shem ur 
We remain standing for the Baruch Hu, the call to worship as we elevate our intention, knowing that we are ready. You're opening our hearts to prayer. Adonai, 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 
seat and take a deep breath as we relax into this Shabbat. As I was driving here this afternoon, I was looking at the snow, the beautiful snow that was just covering absolutely everything like a blanket, like this wonderful embrace that just made everything the same, everything connected. And I thought to myself, wow, what an amazing moment. I thought this is so much like the Shema. When I think of the Shema, I think of this moment, something that connects all of us, something that's bigger than each and every one of us, that's holding us in an embrace. So if you're near a window and you can see the snow outside, even in the dark, if you can see it, just take a moment to appreciate that beauty, that connectedness, as we close our eyes for our moment of connection. Shema. Just like that snow blanketing everything, we pray in Hashki Venu that God's sukkat shmomecha, God's sukkah of peace, will spread over each and every one of us, enveloping us in this blanket of love, of connectedness, and that sense of wholeness, of shlemut. Shalom. Continue with Hashki Venu, page 160. We're gonna keep thinking and holding that shelter of peace so that Josh can turn on his microphone and we can join together. Second time to show. Eloheinu Shalom. Shomreinu. the shelter of your peace over us. Guide us in your wisdom, compassion, and trust. Hashkiveinu Adonai Eloheinu l'shalom Vahamideinu shomreinu Save us for the sake of your name. Shield us from hatred, sorrow, and pain. Ashkivenu Adonai, Eloheinu l'shalom, v'hamideinu shomre. Ha 
Acho que vem no Acho que vem no Adonai Eloheinu le shalom Vahamideinu shomreinu Lechaim So as we prepare to offer words of Amidah, we begin with Adonai Sfatai, asking God to bring us the capacity to open our lips, to reflect on the joys, to reflect on the blessings, to reflect on the moments that brought us um, a singular peace this week. And so on Zoom, I invite us to place these blessings, these, these offerings of gratitude um, within the chat box for our community as they wash over our sacred sanctuary together. And for those of us in the sanctuary and at home, I invite you to rise in body or in spirit to set yourself with intention as we join together with words of Adonai Svatai. So let us take a few moments in personal prayer and reflection. Now, as you've completed your prayer, you may be seated. On Shabbat, we also certainly ask for peace. But we don't just ask for simple peace. We ask for an abundance of it, that it should come over us with grace and compassion and goodness, but a whole lot of it for us and for the whole world. Page 178. Let's join together with Shalom Rav. Shalom Rav. Israel Amcha Tasim Le Olam Shalom Rav Israel Amcha Tasim 
נכנסים לעולם. כי אתה הוא מלך אדון בכל השלום. כי אתה הוא מלך אדון בכל השלום. שלום רב. תשים לעולם, שלום רב על ישראל עמך, תשים לעולם, וטוב בעיניך לברך את עמך ישראל בכל שלום רב על ישראל עמך, תשים לעולם. שלום רב על ישראל עמך, תשים לעולם. תשים לעולם. And so we join together with words of Misha Berach, offering prayers of healing for those in need of healing, of mind, of body, of spirit, of soul. If you're thinking of someone in need of that healing, I invite you to place their name in the chat box. And if you're in the sanctuary, I invite you to rise. And Rabbi Harper will come around and we can share the names of the loved ones that we're asking for healing upon them and upon us. And Rabbi Sherman, you're going to have to help me because I can't see the people in our sanctuary this evening, but I see everyone on Zoom. And of course, this is a time when we give thanks to God for those sacred moments we've shared during the past week. And so if you celebrated a birthday this past week, if you can raise your hand so that we can acknowledge you 
And I know it was our own director of development, Jillian <laughs> Cole's birthday this week. Wait, hold your, oh, great. Tamara, excellent. Any other birthdays? Well, happy birthday. How about anniversaries? I know Rick and Jamie Byrne are on. I see you. Happy anniversary. Anyone else a January or a late December anniversary? Ah, a few. Muzzle tov. Maya and Kai, I want to say muzzle tov to you for becoming the mitzvah. How about on Zoom? Is anyone celebrating the renewal of health, healing? I know a number of people recently. Great to see you. David, I see your hand up and a few others. So I'm glad that things are moving in the direction. How about raise your hand if you are looking forward to 2022 with the hopes that it's a better year than 2021. A lot of hands going up. <laughs> it's this, no, we got some confidence from Neil. Thank you, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I am hoping for a good year. I want to once again thank our community. I was supposed to take a mini sabbatical two years ago, and then something called COVID occurred. And uh, we had to collectively pivot to TBE online. And then I was supposed to take it last year. And uh, I had the hard rewarding work of uh, recruiting two wonderful professionals to join our community, which led to Vanessa uh, Rabbi Harper and Josh leading our community, uh, both on the Bema this evening. And so finally this year, I hope I'm able to take a few weeks off. And so I'm really grateful and I'm grateful for Zoom for allowing me to join in the leadership even while I'm away. So it's great to see everyone. I wanna wish you a happy birthday, happy anniversary. I hope you had a good New Year's and I hope that 2022 is filled with good, uh, blessing and, and health, most importantly. And so let us give thanks for greeting this new day. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech haolam Shehechianu v'kiyamanu v'higiyanu Bazman hazeh Baruch Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu v'kiyamanu v'higiyanu Bazman Hazeh Shalom, everyone. As exciting and action-packed as this week's Torah portion bow is, it's a difficult one. It is plagued for sure. Bo, God commands Moses to go to Pharaoh. Bo, order Pharaoh to let the people go. Lest God plague the Egyptian people with more. After seven terrible plagues already. This time, God readies to strike with the invasion of all consuming locusts, a debilitating darkness, and the devastating deaths of the Egyptian firstborn. While the plagues only occur to the Egyptians to make a mockery out of their behavior, I, and maybe even the Israelites of their time, am left with an uneasy feeling in my heart. Ironically, given the ability to feel unlike the Pharaoh whose heart is hardened by God, I feel sadness about so much devastation. At heart, I do not think this is a story about deserved punishment, but rather about plagues that are beyond our control. The Israelites are plagued with hardship too. I don't know about you, but that just about sums up the way I feel about the past week. Plagued in the first few days of our new year with news of a spreading Omicron. Plagued with call after call from friends testing positive. 
loved ones experiencing sickness, plagued with worry about sending my kids to school, plagued by the burden of decision when no decisions seem ideal, plagued even by the memory and anniversary of the January 6th insurrection on the Capitol. So how can Parashat Bo, how can our Torah guide us this week? Well, with a broad glance at the traje trajectory of this Torah portion, it begins with plagues and ends with the very specific instructions to prepare for redemption. What does that mean? In a few short chapters, the Israelites go from being enslaved to being brought forth out of Egypt by God's mighty and outstretched hand. But much happens in between. At the beginning of Exodus chapter 12, God says to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of the months. It shall be the first of the months of the year for you. In other words, still in the narrow place of Mitzrayim, in the land of Egypt, the Israelites are to welcome a new year, the first of all the months. Rashi teaches that God takes Moses out to see the moon and explains to Moses the cycle of renewal, showing Moses the spiritual cycle of the moon that begins anew, gains in fullness, and wanes again. Rashi says, the stage of renewal shall be the moment of beginning. The Israelites, even from the shackles of slavery, are asked to perceive a cycle of renewal that is yet to come, even if it is currently invisible from their eyes. The commentator Sforno takes meaning from the word lachem, that the time shall be for you, meaning from now on these months will be yours to do with them as you like. This is in contrast to the years when you were enslaved and had no control over your time. Then your days, hours, and minutes were always at the beck and call of your taskmasters. What an incredible reminder of the nature of the freedom to come. It is not only a freedom from physical bondage, but a freedom to use the gift of time how we choose. Then come the instructions for the Paschal lamb offering for God that was prepared the night before leaving Egypt. Of course, the lamb's blood is to be used as the symbol upon the doorpost for the angel of death to pass over. But the act of making a sacrifice is significant. In such a rushed, stressful moment before the eve of redemption, a vulnerable, uncertain, liminal moment, we are to pause and give thanks. Yet, we are to be ready for that moment of redemption, eating the sacrifice with our loins girded and our sandals on our feet, or in New England terms, with our overcoats buttoned and our boots laced, ready to make the journey and brave the storm. And before we even experience redemption, we are commanded. We are to know that it is going to be a time worth celebrating for generations to come. So here we are celebrating a new year amidst the chaos, and, the chaos and challenge of Omicron. We might have assumed or expected that a new year automatically begins with blessing and renewal, but just like 2021 and just like Egypt, it does not. We are to know that while we are gifted the time for renewal, it will not come without making the arduous journey towards redemption. Without this difficult process, let within this difficult process, let us continue to express gratitude and let us take the necessary steps of preparation, not just to wait for redemption to come, but to will it into being. Even though we don't yet taste the awesome freedom of this redemption, let us know that it will be sweet enough to recall for generations to come. I want to end by sharing the stunning poem written by Amanda Gorman, the 23-year-old National Youth Poet Laureate. I cannot believe the parallels to Parashat Bo in word and theme. 
Miss Gorman introduced her poem with these words. We must honor the hardships, hurt, hope and healing of 2021 while also hearkening the potential of 2022. This is our Exodus story. It begins with plagues, yet ends with redemptions. May this be the day we come together. Morning, we come to mend. Withered, we come to weather. Torn, we come to tend. Battered, we come to better. Tethered by this year of yearning, we are learning that though we aren't ready for this, we have been readied by it. We steadily vow that no matter how we are weighed down, we must always pave a way forward. This hope is our door, our portal. Even if we never get back to normal, someday we can venture beyond it to leave the known and take the first steps. So let us not return to what was normal, but reach towards what is next. What was cursed, we will cure. What was plagued, we will prove pure. Where we tend to argue, we will try to agree. Those fortunes we foreswore, now the future we foresee. Where we weren't aware, we're now awake. Those moments we missed are now these moments we make. The moments we meet and our hearts once all together beaten, now all together beat. Come look up with kindness yet, for even solace can be sourced from sorrow. We remember not just for the sake of yesterday, but to take on tomorrow. We heed this old spirit in a new day's lyric. In our hearts, we hear it. For old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne. Be bold, sang time this year. Be bold, sang time. For when you honor yesterday, tomorrow ye will find. Know what we've fought need not be forgotten, nor for none. It defines us, binds us as one. Come over, join this day just begun. For wherever we come together, we will forever overcome. Can you hear that song? May this be God's will, and may be it ours as well. Shabbat Shalom. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught. Before ever we stood at Sinai's foot That wherever we go, it's eternally Egypt That there's a better place, a promised land And the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness That there's no way to get from here to there except by joining hands and marching together singing ya ya la 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 ya ya la la ya la ya la la ya la la ya la 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 ya ya la la
And so we begin to conclude our service with the words of the Mourner's Kaddish. And so if you are here in the Shabbat in observance of a Yortzeit, the anniversary of the death of a loved one or in a period of mourning, I invite you to place the names that, of those you are remembering in the chat box on this Shabbat. We've also been asked to recite the names of Kitty Godfried, the mother of Suzanne Rothstein, Helen Ives, the mother of Dr. Jane Ives, Max Morton, Maxwell Morton, the husband of Judith Morton, Clinton Zalkine, the husband of Lisa Zalkine, and the father of Dana, Drew, Sarah Beth, and, um, and stepfather of Sarah. And so we also recite the names of Kimberly Steinberg Bronski, the uh, Eric Hochberg's cousin, and Lewis Tucker, the father of Marilyn Rosenberg. Is there anyone in the sanctuary? I invite you to rise if you are observing a yard site or in a period of mourning on this Shabbat. And so as the words are placed on the screen, I invite those of all of us, if it is your practice, to rise in body or spirit as we recite together these sacred words. Yit kadal v'yit kadash shemei rabba. Bialma divrach hirute v'yamlich malchute. V'chayechon v'yomechon uv'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael. V'agala v'zman kari v'imru. Amen. Yeheshme Rabba Mevarach Leolam Ome Omaya. Yit Barach Vishtabach Vit Paar Vit Shomam Vit Nase. Vit Hadar Vit Hale Vit Halal Shme de Kudsha Brichu. Leela Min Ko Birchata Vishirata Tush Bechata Venechamata. Da Amiran Viama Vimru Amen. Yehe Shalama Rabba Min Shemaya, Vechaim Alenu Vealko Yisrael Vimru Amen. Ose Shalom Bimramav, Huya Ase Shalom Alenu, Vealko Yisrael Vimru Amen. Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Alenu, Vealko Yisrael. Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Ve'al Kol Yisrael. Amen. So let's be seated and we will continue with a few announcements. Uh, first, I want to thank our staff and our clergy who are in the sanctuary for making it possible for being together in both places wherever we are tonight. I know our clergy have tested and tested and tested again in order to bring us such beautiful harmony this evening. So thank you to all of you and our staff. We are going to, after this Zoom, hang up the Zoom call and keep this link because we're going to return back on this same link at eight o'clock as Rabbi Sissenwein mentioned to gather in community to sing and reflect and join together our prayers for hope for um, a bright 2022. Bring Tomorrow, dinner, bring dessert, bring whatever dessert. you have in front of you. Bring yourselves, just come. It is so nice to see so many of you already on. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., we will join together with our minion for a beautiful prayer service and Torah study. And we have so much wonderful learning and programming going on this week. Starting with Sunday morning, we have received a very special grant from the Runerman Synagogue Inclusion Project to bring to you Rabbi Minna Bromberg from Jerusalem live at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday morning for her very special program, which is called Belonging for Every Body. That Torah is her worship, workshop. It's going to be extraordinary. Then on Tuesday, we have a morning Torah study and also some programs. Our racial justice initiative is uh, welcoming a speaker and getting together on Tuesday at 5 p.m. and also on Monday as well. I see our prime timers are gathering with a wine program. I wonder if I could join that. 
as well this week. Um, and of course, our other regularly scheduled programs as well this week. So I think that is it. And we will see you back for next Shabbat. Please remember to check your e-blasts. We will keep you up to date if anything uh, changes in the building or online this week. And a reminder, I see many of our students online with us that our learning programs just this week will be virtually on Zoom. So I'm gonna turn it back over to our student rabbi, Ryan, to lead us in Kiddush and Motsi. So go ahead and grab your Kiddush cups and your challah. Please join me. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri HaGafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav V'ratzavanu V'shabbat Kodsho V'ahava U'v'ratzon Inchilanu Zikaron L'maase V'reishit Ki hu yom techila lemi krayi kodesh, zecher letziyad mitzrayim. Ki vanu vacharta, veotanu kidashta, mikohamim. Veshabat kodshecha, veahava uvratzon. In Khaltanu Baruch Ata Adonai Mekadesh Hashabat Lechaim. And if we can get a chala, there's got to be one. There's got to be one amongst this room. In a sanctuary, I see one. And there we go. <laughs> Wonderful. Let's join together. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Hamotzi lechem min haaretz v'teyavon. You get to take a bite, fulfill the mitzvah, and we wish each other a Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. So if we can unmute each other and wish each other a Shabbat Shalom. Shalom.